on the inside she want to say bitch why you just showing up because you you at this point you doing too much so kim like um i just wanted to stop by say happy anniversary <laughs> everyone and welcome back to the channel as you read by the title you guys this story is called she been waiting so you guys i'm going to start naming my stories now so this story is called she been waiting and it's about a woman named kim um another woman her name is pam and then pam's husband sam so you guys you don't want to miss this story don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let's get into the story you guys because honey okay so pam and kim they from the same town like as growing up they seen each other coming and going they would speak because they will always see each other so kim and pam like spoke to each other um and saw each other around the same town so um, basically, as they got older or whatever, they would go, like, see each other at the grocery store, etc. Well, one day, Kim and Pam wound up bumping into each other in the store. I mean, literally bumping into each other. When Kim grocery, some of it fell out the bag, and Pam stopped and helped Kim pick it all up and put it in the bag. Because it's just genuine. Like, she Pam is nice. So she helped her pick it up, put it in the bag. They wound up exchanging numbers. Um, and they would talk from time to time or text, seeing what each other doing or whatever. So they was getting real like close, like not best friends close, but close as friends far as communicating. So one day Pam calls Kim and like, do you want to come over? We're having like family over here and we're having dinner. And I wanted to invite you over because it's like we get together. So, you know, Kim like, sure, that's cool. And Pam was like, okay. She gave her a time or date, told her how to dress. You know, it was like casual. So just, you know, dress casual, comfortable, um, or whatnot. So Kim was like, okay. So the day come or whatever. Kim texts Pam, I'll be over. Thanks for inviting me. And um, she brings a dish. So, you know, Kim comes over, you know, like normal, just comes over. Um, so Pam introduced Kim to a lot of her family and friends, but some of them Kim already knew from around town or school because again in this town it was a small town and it was only like two high schools and a couple of middle schools or whatever so they all like ran into each other or, and stuff like that or whatnot especially if they went to school together they were familiar with each other but some of them just didn't hang out together or a lot of them just didn't hang out together other than going out like to the skate rings when they were younger and stuff and seeing each other there or to the mall and seeing each other. You know how people do when they're younger. So at this time, um, Pam and Kim start growing closer even after that gathering and Kim was invited to that gathering. They start getting closer to the point where Kim was invited to a lot of Pam's stuff. And Sometimes Pam didn't invite Kim and she would show up like, you know, but Pam not thinking at the time. She like, okay. So she found out I was having something. She here, whatever. To the point where it started happening a lot. Or Pam would see Kim like in the neighborhood, like, jogging down the street in the neighborhood and she was like girl you never worked out over here you never like jogged over here like she would literally see her and the crazy part is kim never called pam and was like i'm gonna be in your neighborhood i'm gonna be in your area kim was like under wraps with it but pam would see her a lot um but again pam like okay whatever 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 so one day kim shows up um and it was uh sam and pam's anniversary 
and they were about to go out or something like that and kim shows up and was like i know it's y'all anniversary i just wanted to stop by and say happy anniversary girl you could have did that through text and pam looking like oh thank you but deep down and inside she wanted to say bitch why are you just showing up because you you at this point you doing too much so kim like um i just wanted to stop by say happy anniversary and she gave uh them some gift it was a gift in the box or whatever but when pam opened the gift it was more like on a towards more a guy type gift it was like a cigar some cigars you know them the little fancy cigars or whatever so pam was like now kim you know i don't smoke like so this basically for Sam, this this basically for my husband, like, girl, like, stop playing with me. So Kim was like, girl, you can smoke with him. Y'all can make this some type of thing where y'all relaxing and chilling in the backyard or whatever. And sometimes you can just smoke with him. Girl, I'm just, it's a, you know, I'm just giving y'all a gift. Happy anniversary. So she leaves or whatever. And Pam was like, hey. Don't, that don't seem weird. I mean, um, Sam, that don't seem weird. And Sam, like, no, I think it was nice of her. Like, it was nice. It's your friend. She's getting a gift for both of us to, like, bond together. Like, don't, don't blow it out of proportion. So, Sam and Pam gets in the car. They go out to dinner and, like, you know like go a couple of places and all night long pam is like mm -mm, mm -mm. and sam just like he's brushing it off so the time goes by to the point where pam and kim like share personal things with each other when they stress when they unhappy when they depressed and Pam started to seem a little on the depressed side a lot lately. So Kim start pushing her, like pushing her to the edge to the point where she's like, girl, I know life is not going right. Kim just acting like she's depressed with uh, Pam too. And Owen, oh, she's not. But she's acting like depressed too. So she's giving out negative con um, feedback. Kim, um, Pam and Kim giving out negative feedback to each other. But Kim, she has a strategy. But Pam doesn't realize it. So one day, Pam, like, telling her husband, I think I need to see a therapist. Like, I'm starting to get depressed. Like, I don't know why I'm here. Like, like I just don't feel the love. Like, like I just need therapy. So, Sam, like, okay, he paid for her to go to therapy. Sam thinking everything is okay. So, eventually, one night, Sam catches Pam up, crying her eyes out, crying. And he's like, baby, come to bed. While he's walking down the steps, baby, come to bed. What's going on? And he gets all the way down and sees that she's bawling. She's crying. And he, like, rubbing her back. What's wrong? And she said, I don't know. I don't know like when you get depressed you don't think your mind is just all over the place you think the world is against you that's how Pam was feeling so at the same time like Sam not knowing what to do he like I, I, I think you don't need to see this therapist anymore it's not helping we need to figure out other options so Pam agrees to Sam wanting her to see somebody else wanted her to see somebody that can help her well you guys guess what it didn't work out she started getting even more depressed crying all the time like wanting to harm herself to the point where sam admitted her in like a psycho ward like in a, in a place because she kept trying to kill herself so he was trying to get her the help y'all guess who gave him to i the idea to sign pam in this place Kim, for some odd reason, Kim ha is now this big expert, but she's supposed to be depressed too with Pam. But on the other hand, she's playing on the other side. 
telling Sam that he needs to admit his wife before something happens to her. Like, she's playing both sides, you guys. Sneaky, sneaky Kim. So, finally, uh, Sam agrees with Kim to put Pam in a, a crazy place that she had to be in for a couple of uh, weeks, maybe like 30 days or something. And Kim convinced Sam that he she can help with household things. Now, mind you, Pam and Sam have two little boys. So, Kim convinces him, I, I can take the kids to school. I can clean up. You know, I can make sure you got lunch for work. I can just make sure everything is straight until Pam comes home. Like, me and her friends, practically, we like best friends. I got you. You like my brother. And so, Sam, like, all right oh well like okay that's fine so kim doing her due, due, due diligence by cooking cleaning making sure everything nice and she <laughs> always the sam like ah, girl stop you fake so after a while she offers to move in before the 30 days now y'all she offers to move in with Sam, Pam, and their two children, even though Pam is still in this crazy house, she haven't talked to her about moving in. Matter of fact, haven't talked to her at all she, since she's been there, other than what Sam is telling Kim. So, finally, Pam gets out. She's feeling much better. And then one day, um, Kim and Sam goes to work. The children goes off to school. And Pam is at home by herself, feeling sad, started seeing a lot of things that she didn't know. First of all, she didn't even know that Kim was living in the basement at all. She thought when she came home that um, Kim was just there for a little bit to help her. But when she went to the basement, almost all of Kim's belongings was down in the basement. So now, in Pam's mind, she's like, what the, what is going on? So she calls Sam and like, why you didn't tell me that Kim was actually living here? I thought she was here for a couple of days trying to help me get on track and, and finish helping the kids go to school and cooking and stuff so I won't be so stressed out on my first couple of weeks back. And he like, I thought she told you. Matter of fact, I thought when I visit you, I told you. Pam was like, you didn't tell me anything. So she's bawling and crying on the phone to the point where she hangs up on Sam. Hangs up. Turned her phone completely off. Pam is just reckless now. Her mind just running a thousand miles per minute. She goes into the basement again. Goes behind the um, laundry room. It's a. It was a little closet that was behind the laundry room so this is her laundry room and when you walk around it it's like a little closet on the side and so she gets a rope and she got a pill because she was taking medicine from therapy she had her pill bottle in her hand took all her pills and put the rope around her neck hung the little i mean first hung the little rope up on the thing then put the rope around her neck and dangled, hanging herself, literally. Y'all, it was, it's so sad. She killed herself, all that depression, stress and anxiety, her feeling like something's not right. And she was already thinking crazy before she even went in to the program about Kim. But for her to move in and her husband not tell her, so she wound up killing herself. Her husband gets off work. Her husband comes home. Now, mind you, after she hung up the phone and turned the phone off, he was like calling, calling, calling and couldn't get through. Couldn't like it was going straight to her voicemail. So he figured something was wrong anyway. Got off work, came home, walked through the house. Pam, where are you? Pam, let's talk. Where are you? What's wrong? Where are you, Pam? No, Pam saying nothing nothing wasn't saying anything 
So he started walking around the house, couldn't find her. Her car was there, her keys, her purse, everything was there. So he was like, something's not right. Something's not right. He goes down into the basement, finding Pam hung. And then Sam just started screaming and yelling. He calls the police. Police get there. The detectives and everything rule it out as suicide. Because she already had a history of being depressed and all of this other stuff. So they ruled it out as suicide, which it was. So now it's Kim, the two boys, and Sam. Pam is now dead. Kim start um, talking Sam into putting her on the joint accounts that um, him and Pam was on. Sam dumb put her on the accounts and he gave her control over his will. Then next thing you know, several weeks later, Kim and Sam was married literally he had done groom feelings for kim he had done start falling in love with kim the whole time that she was acting like she was trying to help their family and that she was pam friend y'all she had done worked her way into not only the house but sam's heart so sam now that pam is gone he had no reason to not fall in love with Kim. Like she was doing everything that Pam was doing before Pam started getting depressed and upset and angry. So, y'all, one day, Sam goes down into the basement. Now, buying you, Kim stuff already upstairs. She already done made her place in the house, honey. Buying stuff, made her place. She, she felt at home real quick after Pam died. So, months go by couple of years go by now the sons are now old enough to basically peep game so they like studying stuff like yeah like that she was sneaky at this point they got girlfriends and they're starting to create their own families and they start telling other people because now around town everybody was already talking about it it was already a rumor about Kim and Sam before Pam even died because they kept seeing Kim always there and doing all of this stuff that Pam was doing before he sent her to a crazy house. So the boys now got all of this stuff in their head. Well, one day Sam go down to the basement to get some of his tools to fix something in the house. He goes downstairs into the little area where Kim was sent at before Pam died and he find all of this voodoo type stuff like all this stuff like all of y'all the little smoke stuff like kim had the whole nine yards y'all like she was like she was praying over their downfall so she can get herself in there like the whole time y'all she had her mind set on from day one she was about to take kim husband her kids her house she was about to take over her whole life he start digging through her stuff and finding little messages that she was writing on, little sticky notes and all of this stuff, y'all. Now, some people believe in stuff like that, but Sam, he really didn't. So he was like, nah, nah. So one day, Sam start telling one of his friends about Pam, I mean, about Kim. Start telling what he found down in the basement and all of this stuff. And his homeboy was like, you talking about your wife, the one you're married to now? And then he was like, yeah. And he was like, and Sam was like, what's going on? He was like, I thought you knew that she was like, around in your neighborhood a lot all the time she don't even live on that on this side of town she was every time i see her she's jogging through the neighborhood or she's at the grocery store on the outside like i didn't really think nothing of it until pam was in that crazy house that you sent her in and i just kept seeing her coming in and out your house and stuff i was always thinking this is crazy i was already thinking she was trying to take over your house and your wife 
to the point where, bro, I didn't want to say nothing because I thought you would get mad because y'all was pretty close. So Sam just started thinking and was like thinking about the times that Pam was bringing stuff to his attention or complaining. He was like, she was easing her way in the whole time. But by this time, Sam couldn't do anything. It, it beca became years. He fell in love with Kim. So one day, um, Sam goes to the bank, try to borrow money, realize he can't borrow money um, from the bank alone, from the bank, because he wanted to build this like shed in the backyard. Find out he couldn't get a loan, so he tried to draw money out of one of his accounts, and it was at a negative. He goes to the next account, it was at a negative. All his accounts were in the negative, but one specific account was transferred over to another account. So he looked more into it at the bank, and they found out that Kim had drafted all the money out of that account and put it into an account with just her name, so Sam couldn't touch it. So Sam went home, started telling Kim, like, you got to get out. You got to get out. Telling her, like, I think you been did this. I think you was praying on my wife to die. I, I think that you did some voodoo stuff. Get out my house. So Kim was like, what are you talking about? And they going back and forth, tussling back and forth, going back and forth. To the point where Sam puts Kim out. Puts her out. So, Kim gets her own apartment. Sam now in debt because he realized that Kim put a mortgage, a second mortgage out on that house. So, now he had to break the news to his kids to get assistance. Y'all, I kid you not. Three weeks later, Sam started getting real ill and sick to the point where his kids were realizing he couldn't even at all stay on his own at all so they reached out to kim to come back to help him in the house to help you know get well um because he couldn't do nothing really on his own anymore and kim denied the whole thing she was like no matter of fact i'm selling the house like i'm not helping him like i'm selling the house like no y'all in less than a year sam lost all his houses that he had, because he had rental properties, lost the main house, had no more money, and Sam wound up dying because he was so depressed and stressed that all of that stuff was making him sick. And Sam wound up dying. And guess what Kim did? Y'all, Kim went out and found another husband the whole time her plan was to take over this woman's life she really didn't want the man she wanted her life the money the perks that came with pam's life after she got all that she cared nothing about the family the kids sam nothing so the more of this story is be careful who you make your friends honey because Kim wasn't playing. She had a plan all along. She was, She had been waiting all along. You guys, I hope you like this story. Don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe to my channel. Peace.